Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you the feature Frost and Snow for the product Advanced Master Material for Props. Let's start with the Frost feature, which is pretty basic. You can control color, frost intensity, fade distance, and mask areas where you don't want frost. The mask is configured in the same way as for the Puddles feature, as explained in the previous tutorial, and the configuration is also identical for the Snow feature. You also have the parameter object position that you already know, which is useful for props with physics. To avoid this kind of problem, let's move on to the snow feature. By default, when you activate snow, if you want to use it on a large mesh that doesn't have any vertical parts, then you can activate the parameter snow terrain mesh. Otherwise, you will see a tiling noise, as this noise is made for classic meshes such as rocks and furniture, for example. You can always change the tiling of this noise if needed for these classic meshes. But when you use Snow Terrain Mesh, this noise is disabled. If you want to use tessellation to get the depth of snow, you need to increase the magnitude to a higher value like 65, for example. You'll notice that the height of your material without snow is quite low. This is because the parameter base material height intensity controls the height of the entire material and is set to 0.1 by default. You can adjust the height of your material here as well as the height of the snow with the parameter global snow material height intensity to get the deformation of the snow, the method is the same as in the Puddles tutorial. You must use the Blueprint Render Target Capture Character Tracks Meshes and activate Two Sided, as well as the Parameter Character Tracks. When using Tessellation with Snow, you need to disable Virtual Shadow Maps in Project Settings and use Shadows Maps instead to get the best performance. Because Virtual Shadow Maps will create shadows on every little bump in the snow which is a big cost in terms of performance. When using tessellation with snow, it's normal if sometimes you don't see the displacement in editor, as tessellation in Unreal Engine is still in experimental. You have to play to see it. By default, the snow material is the same everywhere, but you can have one for the edges of the deformation and the depth area that has been trampled. You have several parameters to control the look of the deformed areas and their materials. By default, the depth material is the same as the edge material to save shader complexity, but you can also have a different material if desired. The parameter snow height details gives you the details of the snowflakes you see when you look at the snow up close. There's also a parameter fade distance to disable this effect when you're too close so it doesn't look weird. The Parameter Snow Material Secondary Height allows you to have a second height map for height variations. You have parameters for the UV scale and rotation and for the height intensity. Be careful to not exaggerate the height intensity to avoid having the height clamped. You can optimize tessellation by reducing the quality with R nanite dicing rate. With the parameter character tracks, you can modify the look of the tracks. When you have a closed mesh and wish to have deformation, 
you can use mass material and control the mesh opening so that the look remains good while having as much opening as possible to have deformation. The feature mask the snow allows you to hide areas where you don't want snow. You can visualize the mask, control the levels for the snow material and the snow height. If you're creating your own mask, it's the same setup used for the puddle masks in the previous tutorial. Your mask must be set to vector displacement map with sRGB unchecked. These are different meshes from Quixel. The quality is raw on the right, high in the middle, and medium on the left. If your mesh has a lot of detail, the snow won't cover it completely. If your mesh is very detailed, it may prevent the snow from covering it completely, like the high and medium versions. So choose according to your preferences. Moreover, tessellation will look better if your mesh isn't too detailed. As you can see on the mesh on the right, the result is way better than on the left. However, tessellation doesn't always give the best results on this type of mesh, and it's sometimes preferable to avoid using tessellation on it. But as you can see, the result is much better than on a mesh with a lot of geometry, as the tessellation displaces each triangle. This gives a very bad result. If you want to use tessellation on the less detailed mesh, you can try to get a better result by adjusting the vertex blending distance. If you decide to not use tessellation, you lose the possibility of having a layer of snow and deformation, but you can use another method for this. This method consists in creating a new mesh specifically for snow, which will cover the original mesh, regardless if it's a rock or a ground. This requires a few manipulations to set up your snow mesh correctly, but it ensures best results. You can also export the main mesh directly with the snow mesh or separately, as they use two different materials. This makes it possible to use the raw mesh with a lot of details as well as having a layer of deformable snow. Here's how to set up the material. You need to enable full snow, then enable snow offset from the ground. You need to enable max world position offset displacement to prevent your mesh from breaking. To get deformation, you also need to enable tessellation two-sided and character tracks as previously explained. You also need to set the offset. When creating your snow mesh, you need to keep in mind that your mesh must follow these shapes, otherwise the deformation won't work correctly. The way I have created this mesh, I've duplicated the rock mesh, then I've decimated and sculpted it to have the desired shape. The part where there is the rock is very tight because the tessellation adds a large offset once in Unreal Engine. This process required several back and forth between Blender and Unreal Engine. Once the snow mesh had been created, I placed it below the rock with its origin in the center of the scene, then exported it. As previously explained, you can export both meshes together. You can also use a snow mesh without it being associated to a main mesh. You don't have to have deformation either. If you have textures baked to the mesh, you must disable world position, which is enabled by default. Sometimes you may want the snow to appear with an offset for some meshes. You can control this with the parameter snow cover offset. When you have an environment with several overlapping snow meshes, you need to keep in mind that your snow meshes need to be visible to the scene capture in order for the deformation to work. You need to build your environment using this rule to get the results you want. If you have a mesh that uses the parameter mask the snow, you can set your material to masked to make the areas invisible where there is no snow deformation. Otherwise, the material will block the scene capture as it is set in two-sided. 
Now that the visibility is no longer blocked by this mesh, the deformation works on all the other meshes on top of it. You can make the tracks disappear over time by setting the parameter snow tracks disappear, which is set to zero by default. This means they never disappear. If you set a small value like 0.01, .01 for example, the snow will slowly fill up the tracks, gradually returning to their original shape. Like Frost, snow also has the parameter object position. There are a few more parameters and things I haven't explained yet about object position that concern Frost and snow. When you use object position, you lose the ability to change the amount of snow or frost with MPC weather. You have to change it using a dynamic material instance in a blueprint or simply set a fixed value in the material instance. Alternatively, you can use MPC weather with object position by using the parameter object position MPC snow or frost amount. However, you should be aware that when using this parameter, snow or frost will be more or less important depending on the altitude where the mesh is located. It is now connected in the same way as regular meshes that don't have object position. Here's how to create a dynamic material instance in Blueprint, which is used to control the snow or frost amount that has object position. It can also be used for any other parameter in a game, such as adding mud to vehicles when they're driving on a muddy road. In this example, I'm going to make the snow appear after 10 seconds of play, but you can of course create any logic you want. You can modify the transition distance for snow and frost with MPC weather. The values are between 0 and 1 and are 0 0.5 by default. In the same way as in the tutorial humidity, you can control the snow amount with the timeline for your game. That's all for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to be informed about the next tutorials.